Okay, welcome back everybody. Part 4. Hopefully we can have some tunes playing out of this by the end of this video. Uh, going to mount the plate in, uh, the power supply plate into the cabinet using number 10 screws. They're brass screws. There's six of them. Uh, your care must be taken putting it back in. Otherwise you can damage the uh, RF, uh, uh, RF uh, coils. Uh, as you put it in. Okay, the plate is mounted, six screws. Uh, now as we're going to go to the wiring diagram of it. Uh, just a tip on mounting something, and this is just experience will teach you this, and you may already know this, but uh, when you're like six, seven, eight screws in a in, in something. Don't tighten all the screws at once. Put them in, get them started, and that'll give you some wiggle room to make sure all of them starts. I mean, I've done it, and I guess everybody has. You tighten one screw, and you end up in loosening it so you can get the other one fitted. So that's just a little tip for the day there. All right. Uh, the, uh, the wiring diagram is what we're going to come up with is we're coming off the AC and we're coming to one one of the fuse part on one side of the fuse holder now if you'll notice I've already put my heat shrink on here and anybody that's doing this I guarantee you raise your hands now if you've soldered a, a couple of wires together and come to find out you didn't put the heat shrink on there, and so you have to go back and redo it. So, I'm not going to bore you with the soldering or anything like that, but this AC line that comes in, uh, it comes through the back. There'll be a this little clamp will go on it like this, and it mounts with two number 10 screws down here. And then all this will be covered with... Uh, with this power supply cover but uh, I've already got all the uh, heat shrinks in place the AC line will come in go to one side of the fuse now what I plan on using is I call it a modified Western Union um, and some of the older guys uh, know more about it uh, I think this is the way Western Union spliced their wires and they used a lot they stripped back a lot more and the whole purpose of it was to withstand the tensile strength of it but what's pretty much what you do is you take about two-thirds of your 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 winding or your wire and then you hold it and you wind this end of it like this I like to get two to three turns and then you take the other end and you wind it also like that then you make your sorter joint then you do your heat shrink you'll be good to go now if if there is going to be some tensile strength on this you want to strip back a lot more for this and uh, so that's uh, that's how I wire these and hopefully I'll I'll uh, not forget I'll have all my <laughs> heat shrink tubing on but anyway we'll go uh, from the AC line into the fuse from the fuse the other side of the fuse will go to one side of the toggle switch here and then from the toggle switch uh, the other side of the toggle switch will go to the transformer one side of the primary then the other side of the primary will go to the other side of the AC and then after that, we'll uh, I'll have all this fastened back and soldered and heat shrink by the time we get back, and then it'll be time to uh, put our terminal strip back on, and then we'll start doing some testing. And hopefully, if all is planned, we're going to hear some tunes out of this thing here in a minute. Okay, it's something I ran into. I thought I'd share with you. Uh, I'm using some of the old wire. Uh, the wire was uh, insulation was in pretty good shape, and I see no reason to replace it at this time. So um, 
I don't know if you can see this, uh, my camera, I've got a, this is a $34 HD camera I bought, it's, uh, it's made by Vivitar, <laughs> and I paid $34 new at Walmart, um, so, it, I don't know how the focus is, anyway, what happens when, on the old wire, uh, through, I mean, we're talking, this thing's almost 90 years old, uh, there's moisture and when you strip it back there's a little bit of corrosion so what I like to do is put a little bit of alcohol on it uh, some uh, some sort of abrasive uh, steel wool sandpaper something to get that corrosion off before I do the soldering uh, so all right okay remember I said that we were going to may have to adjust those transformers, that transformer and the uh, filter cap uh, choke box uh, to make sure that it's going to fit. And I've made the connections and I'll show you again. I'll pull this off, but I was making sure before I got too far down the line. Uh, this one's go these, this end's going to work fine, but this end uh, is not going to line up. So what I've got to do is i got to pull this back off and uh, adjust this uh, transformer. Uh, box or transformer boxes and, and everything adjust it out uh, or adjust it so I can actually move it over so that it will uh, line up okay I've got it lined up now holes are lining up fortunately I can go ahead and tighten this one on this end down to secure it uh, another thing I want to make sure is go back through here and make sure that None of the wiring, none of the wiring or anything like that is uh, is touching, shorting out. But uh, I think it's going to be a pretty good fit up now. So, all right, got everything hooked up. Um, just as any new project, I um, I brought it up on the uh, Variac, watching the current, and now it's sitting at 120 volts. Uh, it's running about 200 milliamps. All the tubes are lit. Uh, so let's check the voltages while it's in the circuit. Now I do not have the rectifier tube in. Uh, that's that supplies the high voltage. All we're checking right now are the uh, uh, filament voltages. So we're going to check the detector first, and that will be this third set here. And according to the chart, it should be 2.3 volts. Okay, let's see here. And we're reading 2.27-ish. That's close enough for me. All right, then we're gonna check the RF and first AF stage, which is this next set. Uh, and it should be reading 1.3 volts. These leads are slippery and yeah, let's see what it says 1.6 maybe a tad high not uh, but it's not operating either so all right and then uh, let's see the last is the not the last but the power uh, the second AL and it should read 4.8 volts and it's 4.9. All right. Now let's see if I can get in here without hitting these high voltage leads on the rectifier tube. Should be around five volts or so. It's hard to get a good connection in here. And let's see, 5.08. But there's no tube in it, so it may drop a little when I uh, when I put the tube in. But I think that's where it needs to be. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to ramp it back down, put the rectifier in, and bring it up slowly again. Okay, I've got the 80 rectifier tube in the socket, uh, and I've turned it off, and I have uh, run the variac back down, and I'm going to bring this up slowly. Right now, I've got the DC voltmeter on the terminals that will go and this is uh, the high, highest high voltage which is to the uh, first
first. Now I take that back. That's the power to the second AF. It should be 180 volts, and that'll be the red green trace. I'm having to, I'm having to look at the how it was laid out originally. Now that I've got the the new <laughs> color codes, the the wire traces or the, uh, the the color of the wires are different. So I haven't made a, uh, notes in the troubleshooting chart uh, as of yet, but I will. Uh, see, to test the 180 volts on the second AF, uh, I need to be on the red-green, which was originally this one, and also on to the brown, which was this one. Okay, so now we should see 180 volts, give or take, 20%, I would say. Okay, let's turn it on. And we'll watch the voltage. Maybe you can see it, I hope. i uh, try to get this to where everybody can see what we're doing. Looks like my battery's about having it, so let's go up to 50 volts. And don't see any high voltage. Well, yeah, 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 we are. We're starting to get some. As everything comes up, the current looking good, less than 100 milliamps so far. Let's go up to 100, uh, 75. I'm sorry. There's 200 milliamps, and we're shooting. Now well, we're hitting 142 volts. Now I've got my antenna and a ground, and I've got my uh, speaker hooked up. I'm optimistic because this thing was working when the when the transformer, the primary, just opened. So, okay, we're sitting there. Let's go on up. Let's go on up to 100. Let's go on up since I'm running out of battery. Let's go to 123 volts. Okay. All right. Let me see what we got. Uh, looking uh, just south of 400 milliamps. That sounds about right. Let's see. We've got about 100. And, 100 and, let's let it level out a little bit. 149 volts. Now you whiz kids out there, do the math for me. Uh, yeah, that's 80, almost 83 uh, percent. So we're good there. All right. Do I hear something in my speaker? I don't know. We'll see here shortly. Let's check one more. Uh, let's see the uh, first AF, and that should be from the red wire which was, let's see, let me make sure I'm on the right one here. That's the red to the black red tray. So that's the red, which was the fourth one on this side, which should be right here. And let's see, the black red trace, which was the second one. Oh, I'm hearing popping, popping, and let's see, 148, nah, drop it a little bit, 100, and, let's call it 146 volts, how's that look, where's that, and our current is holding good, I don't see no, I heard the cracking, I wonder if that's the electrical wiring in my house burning, I don't know, that's 146 divided by 160, Oh, yeah, yeah, we're in tolerance there. All right. Uh, so, it's not over. So, that's a good thing. It's not really under that much. But, let's see. Let's tune this thing. Let's tune this bad boy. Let's see. Uh, it's four-gang RF. Now, like I say, this is a TRF. Oh, whoa. Now, my antenna is about 10 feet, and these things, you've got to have, that waters, you've got to have a good ground, and you have got to have a good antenna, so. All right. 
may have to go through doing the alignment again. I don't know. We'll see. I'm going to hook it up to a better antenna and do some testing, but I'm going to let it burn in here a little bit. Burn in may not be a good term again, but uh, um, let's see. Uh, the way you tune these circuits, let's see if I can get a good picture in here, is you take and you loosen these are controlled all by brass bands and as you turn this one knob it turns all of them in sequence now you can go down in between and there's some set screws on each one of them and the way you tune this radio is you go and you can either use a, a signal I, fortunately I have a radio station on the low end I have one on the high end so I use it and I do it by ear but you can shoot a signal on each end of the band and tune it. And you tune the first one, and then you tune the second one, and then once, and then you manually tune it by holding the knob. You hold the left hand knob so this one doesn't move, and then you tune each one of them and you peak all of them until you have the maximum. Then once that happens, you set them, you go and check the other end and do the same thing. And it's a back and forth thing. All right, let me uh, let this thing cook a little while and uh, do some more voltage checks and things like that. And we may button it up a little later. And then I'm going to hook it up to a real good antenna, a real good ground, and see if we can't get some some uh, a pretty good demonstration on how it works. Okay, guys, I wanted to demonstrate something. Like I said, I only have a small antenna. And uh, so I, I was just curious what would happen if I hooked up an outs outside antenna. So uh, I'm going to check it here and change it. <laughs> it's a little bit of difference. Now this, this radio has a, uh, a distance or a local switch. If you have a real station close by you flip that on and it um, stops some of the distortion this is a very simple set but gotta remember this was 27 28 time frame so uh, there's another station I might be able to get this time of day I've turned volume up There it is, very weak. That's what I ran into when, when uh, originally when I had it. But at night, when I hook up an outside antenna, I get, I get everything. So I'm just limited on the number of stations here, and the, the sensitivity on this one is not where I want it to be. And like I say, I'll go back through here and see if I can retune these. All right, let me uh, let this cook a little while and we'll see how, how it's working and then we'll uh, see if we can't get a final demonstration of it. Okay, I'm going to demonstrate. Uh, maybe you can see down here. I had to turn my light off. Uh, the set screws are down on the, on the front of the uh, tuning capacitors. Apologize, uh, the fluorescent light causes too much havoc. So let me. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to tune this capacitor for maximum. And then I'll go back and tune each one of these uh, for max. And you try not to short that out with your finger either. And we'll go back through there again. Let's tune this one. Now tune this stage. And then 
in this stage. What I'm doing is rocking it to capacitor a little bit. And I think that's how you align that particular radio. Okay, I checked the uh, down on the far end of the band, that weak station we had a while ago. It's a lot better. And I rocked those and got it the best. Now I was able, in this middle of the day, I don't get much here. There was another one up here. Another station coming in there. And then of course, my, <laughs> my local oldies. So, that's how you tune the Atwater Kent 38. A little bit better conditions tonight. This is a this is the fine tune. Got a little rubber grommet that you can tune with. local station there. Alright, I think it uh, concludes this project. Thanks for watching. This is Larry from East Tennessee.